down, stepping down, stepping down, stepping down. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to find something at SEMA that I saw was gonna be there, and it's a new upcoming technology that I have been very interested in. And it's going to pretty much change the way people build custom cars. And it's also starting to change the way that manufacturers design their prototype cars. And so instead of doing it out of clay, they've started to just do it in CAD and then make these parts with a new machine. And this thing is really awesome. And it's really cheap to use as a DIYer. It is a new technology that's coming out and it's gonna start kind of revolutionizing the way that people build bodies and can fabricate stuff with cars. You could pretty much 3D scan whatever you make in clay or body filler, and then you could have them make it out of metal, which is really cool. So this kind of looks like it should be a fender. If you have ever formed sheet metal parts by hand, you know exactly how difficult and time consuming the process can be. This girl has a YouTube channel. She is building a custom Toyota truck and making all the sheet metal by hand for this truck, which she's doing a great job but she has hundreds and hundreds of hours in forming all these pieces, which is fine at the end of the day, but if you want repeatability, it's not really that great. And if you want something that's going to be able to produce parts and have that repeatability, you're gonna to wanna to have a CNC machine, and these machines are going to get cheaper and cheaper and better and better as time goes on. Also, she has probably $100,000 worth of tools in her shop, and then she has to re-weld all these panels together. So instead of having four panels that you have to weld together that are going to warp, and then you're gonna to have to reform, these machines can make that one panel all as a single piece. Nissan was testing this technology out, and it seems like car companies have kind of dabbled in this technology and then kind of straight away from it because it wasn't 100% there. But as the years have progressed, the technology has gotten better and better, and people have learned from the mistakes of each revision of this technology, which each company calls it a different thing, but Nissan actually did a pretty good job when they were testing it out. What they were doing was they got a piece of sheet metal that was stamped, they 3D scanned it and they tried to reproduce it and they came really close to getting the part 100%. And at the end of the day, if you're going to be making custom one-off cars or if you're gonna work on old cars that you can't find the sheet metal parts for, these machines are going to be a lifesaver for all those sheet metal parts that aren't available anymore. The company that was at SEMA was using a figure sheet metal forming tool and it did a great job. The great thing about being able to go to SEMA, see this technology, run my hand across the panel made all the difference because in the videos, it looks like you can see the lines from it going around. So it's pretty much 3D printing a piece of metal in sort of a reverse way and it's just pressing down and forming it. And what they have on this machine really isn't what I like to see in these things, but it does work. It's, I don't think it's as accurate as the machines that have two robot arms. It's a lot more simplified, but at the end of the day, it works, but it's really small and compact. So over the years, these companies have gotten better and better technology. And now, as you can see, these machines can do large sheets and they can do very, very complex shapes. This is the machine that I think is the best revision of the technology. It has a robotic arm on one side that is pushing and then the other side is kind of as a support. So then as you push the metal, you don't have to worry about the panel warping. So if you're pushing on a piece of metal on one side, you're gonna have tension on that panel. As you push that panel in more and more, the tension on that piece of sheet metal is going to increase, which means once you unclamp it and once you cut it, there's gonna be a spring back. And some companies 
have figured out what that spring back is, but if you use these two stylus or forming tools on these robot arms, then you can make a hood or whatever it may be, any panel that you think can think of, and then you can go cut it out with a laser or a mill and it's all in one machine. So the figure machine doesn't actually cut it out. You pull it out of the machine and it looks like you have to hand cut it. But some of these more advanced machines, they will scan the surface, get the best fit, and then cut the part out all in one so you know it's 100% accurate. And I think as the technology grows, but they have a video over here and it's just pretty much two dies that are, you can see they're gonna make a door right here, two dies that just push against each other to deform the metal and he uses oil. And the surface finish, it's really hard to see in the videos. It looks like there's a bunch of kind of ridges, but on the part itself, it's actually pretty smooth. And then they could do aluminum as well. The one thing you do notice is the deformation on the corners. But at the end of the day, if you're doing this by hand, what do you think? You think this, this piece would be a pain to do by hand? It'd probably be a oh. few pieces welded together. If you did this by hand, you would have more than a week's worth of work into it. Yeah. But what that machine basically is, is an English wheel and planishing hammer well, ran by a computer. Well, all it's doing is there's there's one die on one side and one die on the other side, and it's pretty much just pushing like this to push the metal out or it's in. It's like a power hammer. Yeah. An air hammer with a backing, but it's all ran by computer. Yeah, so, but and- they're, they're eliminating the stretch and everything else that's coming into these. You know, when I look at this, if I got a aftermarket panel and I'd say, yeah, that, this thing's pretty rough, you know, you wouldn't use it, but this, this stuff all still needs to be tuned up. Yeah. You know, by professionals. So that's where a job like, guy like me would come in to mount something like this into a car but it's a genius idea i mean i think they're ahead of the market on what's going on especially if you wanted to do carbon fiber yeah well they just came out with this technology it's like just released so i've talked to these guys uh, last time i was here so the same group members. yeah and uh, i had questions about about where they're going and they're going that direction so yeah but just imagine if we scanned the uh that star chief and you ended up doing carbon fiber panels up. Eh, I don't want to do carbon fiber. Just as an example. Yeah. I'm mean, not saying you're doing that, but. But the cool thing is, yeah, if you want to make this out of carbon fiber, you just come in here and you could vacuum bag directly off of this. Um, you could clean this up a, a lot, but uh, if you just wanted something like an internal mold for the underside of a hood, this would be perfect. You could just make this. It's a hard mold, it's not gel coat. And I think that, you know, there's some stuff going on here. It might have, looks like it might have slipped off and done some stuff. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, this is going to start getting better and better. And then they're going to make like a whole car with this machine. So they bought two of the machines, a uh, company actually makes, and they have all kinds of different examples going on here. So I'm now back from SEMA and it was a great show and I really love seeing the new technologies that companies bring out because that's what SEMA is about. I hate when I go there and it's just a bunch of the same old thing. You see the same old cars that have been there for the last five years and it's just nice to see innovation and that's really what the automotive industry is about. It's about innovation and this is going to be a game changer because now you don't have to, I know it's nice to know how to do sheet metal work and I'm not even anywhere close to what that girl could do on her Toyota truck. But at the end of the day, being able to have that repeatability where you can go in, design something in CAD, and then you can go and reproduce that over and over again and even manufacturers have started to do their prototype cars on these machines. And I think, and the guy was saying also that these machines, because they can just go in, slide a piece of sheet metal in there, and they're going to get larger and larger, that they are faster from the point of production or design being done 
starting production, they are faster than having to go make a die because there's a lot of stuff that you have to do when you make a die because a die actually isn't the same shape as the part that comes out of it. They are kind of distorted to compensate for that spring back that you get for the metal after the die releases. So that's kind of a trial and error. They have to design the die, test it out, make sure it's going to be to spec. Then they have to three scan it, make sure it is to the design. And if it isn't, they have to change that die. And that can take months to years. These machines, you can go in, run the part, and it's going to be exactly as the CAD file, which is awesome. Have it cut out, throw it on the car, and then you could move on to the next thing and the next part. And if you need to remake that part for another car, you can. So uh, at the end of the day, as the technology advances, especially with 3D printing as well, 3D printing has been getting better and better. And I think this is going to go right along with 3D printing and hopefully it gets cheaper and cheaper. I mean, $800 to have a custom piece of sheet metal made if you want a custom hood and you have something designed, that is that is crazy, that is awesome. So I'm gonna end the video here. I can't wait to see what the future has to bring with this technology. And if you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.